Hey guys, how's it going? Welcome back to another episode of Friday Night Live. Thrilled to be back here again. I'm in a new studio. As you can see, I'm in Galway now. I moved up there last week. Delighted to be joined tonight on Friday Night Live by my good friend Patrick. He's going to be coming on in just a quick sec. He's also my uh, co-host on the new podcast we're bringing out tomorrow, guys, if you haven't seen it already. It's called Styling and Profiling. Thanks so much, everyone, for joining. Hopefully, Patrick will be on in just a quick sec. Hello, James Foley. Hello, Laura Daly. How's it going, guys? I just said I'd give everyone a shout out there now while Patrick's coming on. So for anyone that doesn't know Patrick, he's a blogger. He's a columnist with the Limerick Leader, as well as a whole host of other newspapers. And he's also a bit of a model, blogger, bit of everything. And we're going to be chatting with him about a whole host of things tonight. Thanks so much to everyone for joining. I'll just wait for Patrick to join there now, guys. But while we're waiting, just to let you know that the new podcast is out tomorrow, 9 a.m. You'll be finding it all on the Styling and Profiling podcast. And here comes Patrick, I hope. No, it's James Foley again. James Foley, you need to go and get a life. Seriously, stop coming on my lives, man. You're always at it. Clearly a man with too much in his time. Too much time in his hands, even. So, yeah, Patrick's also the director of Miss Limerick and Miss Clare. He ran the Miss TLC event earlier uh, this year, which was amazing. Behind closed doors, I was luckily enough to be involved in it, and it was amazing stuff. So, yeah, hopefully he'll be coming on in just a quick sec. Um, so, guys, I'm actually back again live over on the Peter Ren Run page as well this coming Sunday. Uh, I hope you're all excited as well for the toy show. I just see is Patrick anywhere along there. He doesn't seem to be joining. Oh, here he is. Here he is, the main man. He's hopefully going to send me a request. Here we go. Uh, yeah. With Patrick. Apologies now, the Wi-Fi here is not the best, but we'll make do for uh, what it's worth. Thanks so much to everyone for joining. Hello. Hi, how are you? So this is going to be fun. Oh man, I'm the same. It's a, it's actually ridiculous how poor the Wi-Fi is, isn't it? <laughs> I, don't know, I have Vodafone and uh, it seems to be down all day, so I don't know what's going to But yeah, look, we're here. Let's do this. <laughs> yeah, well look, Patrick, I've been trying to, I suppose you and me have been friends though with a good while, but I suppose initially how we met was I was trying to interview you for ages and we never got around to it. <laughs> That's true, actually, yeah. Uh, this is a, a long overdue interview on the Dinny Grow show, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and I suppose you actually don't typically do a whole pile of interviews. Was that something you decided, like, not to do from day one? Or is it just something you kind of like to keep your personal life personal, uh, etc.? A bit of both. Um, I kind of, I did a podcast two years ago, the Love Life podcast, and it kind of, it ended. Um, and I suppose I wasn't really happy with the way it went or whatever so like i didn't do a lot of uh podcasts or stuff like that the only like i would only do kind of mainstream stuff so the only like i went to, i was on jenny green show on 2fm and stuff like that i wouldn't turn down stuff like that but i kind of turned down everybody's podcast uh for the last two years um plus kind of you know when i do stuff like this i did social mind there a couple of weeks ago and kind of when i do stuff like this i i've tried to be very very honest uh and like I, I i am really kind of honest and brutally honest to a point so like uh it's probably best that i don't do a lot of these things because i kind of say too much sometimes and uh, i like i do i speak from the heart um like even if you watch the social mind thing i kind of got a bit emotional i kind of find like if you do if you're doing that every every day every week every month it kind of loses its power and it loses its meaning so uh so yeah i try and keep keep it special yeah, well, come here. I tell you, you're some man for being straight up and honest the whole time. I tell you, I can vouch for that. You're, and that's one of the reasons I suppose we get on so well is you're one of the few people that have kind of put me right when I'm going wrong and yeah, vice yeah, versa. Just... A lot of the time, I need, I need a bit of, need a bit of guidance to, here and sure. there. <laughs> and Patrick, I suppose one thing I'll have to ask you uh, with the toy show tonight. Are you going watching? Uh, because we're going to obviously finish up in time for the toy show. Because obviously I'm a big, uh, big nerd, as you can see with oh, Baby Yoda. Finish up well in time for the toy show. Yeah, I will. Of course, I'll watch the toy show. Um, I was working today. Like I, I, I was up at um, what half four because I was working like first thing this morning. So I came home, uh, had something to eat, and went to bed, and then woke up about twenty minutes ago, um, wanting to do this, and discovered the internet was down and. I've been trying to kind of 
find a spot in the house where I could get 4G. But um, I, yeah, I had my nap earlier so that I could wake up in time to watch the Thai show. So yes, I'm very much looking. It's going to be a very weird Thai show with no audience. Um, yeah. I saw a tweet, tweet the other day saying that uh, RTE invented COVID so they wouldn't have to give away all the PlayStation 5s to everyone in the audience at the Thai show. So, <laughs> but, um, yeah, I know it's like, sure, it's a, it's an Irish institution. Like, uh, Gay Byrne, Pat Kenny wasn't so great, but uh, I think Brian Doverty <laughs> is quite good. Um, what about you? You obviously... Yeah, yeah. I suppose I, I moved in here last week and I'll be watching it with the, the housemates, which will be kind of nice rather than the family um, as usual. Yeah. But I suppose, weirdly, one thing we're missing here is a Christmas tree and decorations. I must go and get some. But I've seen on your story during the week, Patrick, like, full on, you're like the North Pole in your house, is how I yeah. describe it. Yeah, no, I, I kind of, I, I put up a story there the other day that got uh, a lot of eyes of the, the, yeah, the Christmas decorations in the house here. Um, yeah, it's a, like I suppose the the story behind that is um, we'll say I suppose you know this maybe some people who read my blog and stuff know this but we'll say my mother would have been she would have been sick most of my life but um, in like two thousand and six she got six she got very 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 ill and like spent an entire year in the Beaumont Hospital um, and then was moved to the rehab clinic in Dunleary but like she was. So she went into hospital in January and she was finally coming home the third week of December of 2006. So my mother was always someone who loved Christmas. So myself and my sister, uh, before she was due to come home, went and like bought hundreds and hundreds of euros worth of Christmas decorations so we could have the house like just really Christmassy for when she came home. And that's kind of how it started. And then every year it built upon it, built upon it, built upon it until like the place was like something out of like an American TV show or a hotel or something like that. Um, and like people would come to see the house because like it was so Christmassy and stuff like that. And then I suppose uh, my dad died in 2018. So like I kind of broke up with Christmas in a way. Um, like, like I said, I had thousands of euros worth of Christmas decorations and I put them on into storage because I just, I thought until maybe I had a family of my own that I wouldn't use them again. But um this year, I think, like, I put up a tree a week ago, and then I was off work over the weekend, and I just said, you know what, fuck it, I'll just put everything up, and so then went the whole jingle all the way, and put everything up, uh, and went the full body of the elf, and then it's been, it got a good reaction on the gram anyway, so it seemed like the right decision. Yeah, well, come here, it looks amazing. I must draw it. I must get you to come up here and socially distance and do up this place, because uh, this is not a good thing for me. <laughs> <laughs> definitely not I'd be well suited in your place though as an elf I believe I think yeah. I, I was a Christmas elf <laughs> yeah, before yeah, you, we've lots of shelves you can sit on yeah. <laughs> yeah well do you know what it's actually gas I used to work as a Christmas elf for so many years I was in part oh I swear to God did I not tell you this before <laughs> no you didn't and I haven't seen any photographic evidence of it oh it's my God I'll actually I, we, we'll, uh, I'll have them at some stage I'll put them up uh, but yeah, I used to work as a Christmas elf. It was great fun. But no, that, that's that's a really nice. I think that like you're you're celebrating Christmas again because obviously that's um that's like it can be such a an odd time of year when when you do lose people um mm. in your life like that. So I, I'm delighted now you're celebrating it again and it looks fantastic, which is great. Yeah, hopefully, I like as I said, I've been asleep for the last two hours, so I missed uh, Michal Martin's announcement. But hopefully, like we could have visitors for Christmas so we can have socially distanced Christmas parties I don't know but yeah well I think you can have update me what was the announcement that came out (laughs) I'll be honest with you Patrick I was the same I I went to bed Um, as well I was direct as well I'm up since five but um no and Patrick I suppose as well like one thing as well besides that that you do do is you do a lot of blogging and stuff like that and I suppose that's how I came across you. And your blogs are really good for anyone that hasn't seen them. They're really, really kind of... You're one of the few bloggers that I know that actually has a blog and actually a regular one that's like updated. Yeah. And for for you, like, how did you even get into that? Because like, I know a lot of people kind of would love to be an Insta blogger where it's just throwing up pictures, etc. But you're actually like a, like an actual typing out the fucking blogs. How did you fall into that? Or was it, was it something you always wanted to do? No, um, I suppose it's kind of like, um, 
I, I write for six different newspapers altogether, so I have to like create like written content every week anyway. So it was just a case of like um, you know turning the blog the newspaper articles into blogs. So like I've been writing for the uh, newspaper for like four years. So I have a, like a backlog of four years worth of content. So I just <laughs> said like, why not throw these up online um, so that like people in America can read them? So it was just kind of, uh, that's how the decision came about. I had been threatening to do it for a long, long time, but um, I'm a kind of, a, as you as you know from uh, this podcast venture we're about to do, I'm kind of a bare minimum kind of guy um, and like just didn't have any idea how to create a website or set up a blog. So that was the reason it took two years for me to actually put an online blog up because I had no idea how to do it. I had to get my friend Gary Fox to do it for me. And uh, he did. And that's how the blog came about. But the oh, well, career article has been there around for about four years. So, Yeah, yeah come here. They're, they're absolutely amazing. If anyone hasn't gone, uh, click the link in Patrick's bio and you can go and read some after this. But Patrick, as well as that, like, you're, you're, you're such a, you're kind of like a, an encyclopedia because every time I'm like, ah, I kind of get this guy. There's another layer to, you, and I suppose you're touching here on the podcast. One thing that episode one that we do kind of discuss, and it's a sneak preview, I suppose, is that you're a trained psychotherapist. And that's something like very few people will know about you. I know it because I'm, I'm good friends with you. But like, do you want to tell us about how you got into that and how, I suppose, you've transitioned perhaps away from it the last few years as well? Um. Okay, Jesus. Uh, how did I get Sorry. <laughs> no, you're, you're grand. Um... <laughs> So I suppose, Jesus, we're going, like, this is going to be a, a, another deep, deep one. Um, so as I said, right, um, my mother would have been, like, sick. She she got a brain tumor when I was six years of age and would have been kind of dealing with um, the fallout of that. Like, she had complications. Um, she had, like, she had to get shunts put into her brain, stuff like that. She kind of had uh, all of the kind of after effects of a, a very severe stroke after the brain tumor and, and there was other like other stuff to draw life now obviously growing up around that was very very difficult so like i came to a point in my life where like the, the stress of the family illness was something i like wasn't dealing with uh properly so like, what actually happened to me was i was waking up and finding clumps of hair on my pillow and not understanding what was going on because like it wasn't like go bald it was just literally lumps of hair so i went to my gp and um i like i said what's going on and she was like there's nothing physically wrong with you it's just you're not dealing with the stress of your mother so you actually need to talk to a counselor so i went to counseling and i found it amazing um i worked with a, a very good counselor at the time and then went on uh i worked with like other counselors over the years and stuff like that but um through counseling i kind of I acquired skills that then when my mother was dying um, and like the rest of my family were kind of falling apart, uh, like I was kind of able to help them with stuff that I learned in counseling. So then like around that time, people would say to me a lot, like you should be a counselor. Uh, and like, you know, it's something, yeah, well, maybe I should, whatever. But then when my mother passed away, I kind of like had a new lease on life and decided I was going to do all the things that I wanted to do. And like, that's actually the time that I took, started taking modeling seriously and started doing some acting roles and stuff like that. I just kind of decided I was going to embrace life and, and, and do the stuff that I always thought I'd love to do that. Well, instead of saying I'd love to do it, I said, I will do it. And one of those things, like I was working for the Bank of Ireland at the time. So that's what kind of... Um, inspired me to take uh, a redundancy package and go back and do the college course and do the four years and qualify as a psychotherapist. Uh, so like, I, and I've, I've worked as a counselor and um, like, it is the most amazing thing I've ever done. Um, like when you can like solve a, a problem that can affect real change in someone's life, there's no better thing in the world. Like I, I I'm, I'm trying to kind of verbalize it. I, I'll just, I'll tell you a story. I won't mention any names, but like one of the people I counseled was a man and um, he was in a wheelchair. He had like fallen down through a roof and damaged his spine and was paralyzed from the waist down. And he came to me and I, I was sure that I was going to have to deal with the fact that um, he was in a wheelchair, but he didn't care about the fact that he was in a wheelchair. What was like... 
the, the, the issue was that his son had taken his own life. He had hung himself. And like we went, like we, we spent six, six months working together. And we, 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 we talked through so much of the issues with his son. Because like he, had, he was blaming himself in the beginning, but he had come to the, um, he had, like he had realized that he wasn't to blame. There were other things going on in his son's life that uh, led to this unfortunate, awful event. So he had come to terms with that, but still he had a problem. He would wake up at 5 a.m. every morning and all he would see was his son in his final moments. He could not get this image out of his head. And we tried everything for six months. We tried everything to change this. And it took literally breaking the man's day down minute by minute to find out what the problem was. And we actually found out what the problem was. Now, the problem was because he was paralyzed from the waist down to dress himself he had to lift himself out of bed with kind of a heist. And to put on his trousers, he had to put his chin across a leather strap. And every time his chin hit the leather strap, that image came into his head. And the foreboding of that event woke him up at 5 a.m. every morning with those images. We, we cracked that we ch and we changed his, his life. That's the best feeling in the world. And that's the best thing you can do. So like, you're right, I have moved away from it because I need to make money. Um, I need to pay bills. They stay coming through the letterbox every month no matter what you do. But it is my ultimate goal to go back to that like in later years. And that's kind of my retirement plan is to go back to be a full-time counselor. So there's well, a long answer for you. Jesus, Patrick, I tell you, like I, I know some people think I probably know all that. I, I, I think I heard that story before. But man, that's that's so like power powerful. Do you know that type of way? Um, and come here, geez, I I I, mm. I hope you do go back to it, no doubt. Um, and as as I said at the get go, like the plan. You, yeah. yeah, you you will. You're always there to to lend an ear to me when I be fucking whinging about stupid things or whatever. But li like that, no man, geez, b best luck and come here, like geez, I I'm kind of blown away by that. Um, Jesus, <laughs> there's there's not too many. Come here, there's not too many people that will leave me kind of speechless. But Jesus, fair play to you, Patrick. And I suppose, like, I suppose touching on that, like, this whole, this whole social media world, I suppose, you're a small bit older than me. It can be so, like, I even see there during the week with Roz Purcell. I was actually oblivious to it until today. But you even see, like, how, how do you think, like, social media, like, I'm not saying it's bad or good or any crack like that, but just, like, it's fucking with people's heads, isn't it, Patrick? Like, really? It like, can. Your I mean, it can. Uh, like, it's, um, it's very addictive, you know? Um, I think we're going to come up to a point where it's something that people have to probably get therapy for, um, like like they would get therapy for being addicted to drink or gambling or cocaine or whatever. I think like there are people who are absolutely addicted to their phones, addicted to likes, addicted to comments, addicted to impressions, and it is kind of a dangerous road to be going down. You know, you I, I think you need to be able to put the phone down and um, live without social media for a while uh, and like yeah. appreciate what's real in your world and the people that are real in your world. Like I see, so I, I actually re reposted a tweet I saw there like that if like Instagram disappeared tomorrow, there's a lot of people that like could not live with that. That they've become so reliant on Instagram for their, um, you know, positive reinforcement that like it's just if it was taken away they just they would absolutely collapse and like they wouldn't be able to live and i think that's kind of a dangerous road to be going down but that's a whole other conversation I guess. yeah and c come here patrick like i suppose initially like we'll transition now onto the the podcast or whatever but like initially would, would you when, when i met you like i didn't know any of this stuff and i think a lot of people now would be blown away by that and fair play in terms of like overcoming all those things and helping so many people but i, I suppose as well like with that, like, because you're a social media influencer, do you do you always kind of, I suppose, do you have a different view on it than most people working in the industry? Like, obviously, you get the paid promotions. That's what people will see. But are you very kind yeah. of conscious about what you do and what you don't then as a result of your training and stuff? In what way do you mean? Like, uh, like I don't really think it relates back to my training. I think it's more kind of me as a person um, and the type of person yeah. I oh, am. Well, I would, fair would enough, yeah. My, like, yeah. psychology training or anything like that. 
or I, suppose, uh, <laughs> I just I would be conscious of not letting social media ever take over my life. Um, and like you said it earlier on, like I, I, I don't overshare, um, you know, only like my my inner circle get to like see certain parts of my life, um, not the 20,000 Instagram followers, because like once you open up your life to that, you don't own it anymore. It owns you. So like, I would never go down that route, I don't think. Yeah. yeah, and come here. What what do you what do you think? Like, and we're not throwing shade on anyone here now, and I'm, I don't plan to. But like, w- with with social media, and you see people talking about mental health. As someone that's trained in it, do, do you think that conversation's getting a bit kind of overdone, or is it the type of thing where less is more with it? Or like, what would be your thoughts on that? Because I see a lot of people. It's almost like the fucking selling point now online, uh, which is great talking yeah, about things, yeah. but not too much. I, there's certainly, um, you know, having mental health advocates and people who are willing to talk openly about their mental health, it, it, you can't say that's a bad thing. But, I mean, you know, I have been in a room um, full of Insta heads um, and, and heard someone say that they were going to change their content strategy from fashion to mental health because when they put up mental health stuff, it gets more likes. So, I mean, it is a thing, you know what I mean? People do think like that. That's kind of the kind of horrible side of it. Um, personally, I don't like it when people like share, you know, images of themselves, you know, showing off how good a shape they're in and hashtag it with mental health stuff because like fair play to you if you if you got yourself in a tremendous nick, like by all means, take take, the, the, the lap of honor but I don't like it when it's associated with mental health because chances are like you know you showing off your six pack or your perfect ass or whatever like that is going to make a lot of people who are looking at that feel really bad about themselves and that's not good for mental health that's bad for mental health so I kind of don't like that aspect of it and there is a lot of that you see a lot of that um, like you know <sighs> Is that what you mean? It's like I yeah, don't want to, come here. I, don't I, want I know to, absolutely. I come here. Like yeah, yeah. yeah I come here. And you know, I, 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 actually, yeah. Go on. Sorry. Oh no, I was going to say we, we, we didn't mean you to. What? Yeah, no, I didn't mean to throw shade at anyone or like put you in a position to say or something. You or do, Danny. But, Who are you throwing shade at? <laughs> you next year in there? Didn't you do like what was Cork Lift Fest? Not you. Weren't you our fitness influencer at one point? No, no, a different guy altogether. Uh, I don't know who you're on about. See, no, longer here hair. See, I know him, so I can bring up shit like this. <laughs> uh, but come here, speaking of, moving speaking swiftly of things, on, yeah. yeah, moving swiftly on from my checkered history, uh, there was a page actually used to call me out the whole time, Fit Fam Failures. We never figured out who it was. But whoever it was <laughs> yeah, okay. hated me with a passion. He did more for my fucking profile than anyone, uh, just roasting me. Well, come here. Speaking of roasting me, Patrick, <laughs> that moves lovely on to the podcast we've got coming out tomorrow, 9 a.m. Yes. It's going to be available everywhere. There's a, it's dating in the digital world. And I suppose the concept that we have with this is there, all the stuff is based kind of on your blogs with our own kind of twists on it. Am I right in saying that? Well, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, bringing, uh, like I have, Years and years worth of blogs. Um, some of them like have been extremely popular. Um, you know, I've gotten letters written to me about some of my blogs. So like, it, it's been long overdue to bring kind of a podcasting interactive form where people can like directly interact. And uh, you know, it's been something we've been trying to do for a long, long time. So it's finally given us an opportunity to do it. Um, so yeah, look, I'm really looking forward to it. Like we. As I said, episode one is in the can and like we've gotten a couple of our closest friends to listen to it and say, what do you think? And our own Sheehan slated it. If you're watching, Absolutely Sheehan, we took us. all your advice on board and we changed what you didn't like. But my <laughs> God, it was a hack job. Like Owen Sheehan absolutely <laughs> destroyed the podcast. Um, stopped oh. short saying it's the biggest load of shit that he's ever heard. <laughs> But in fairness, he did give us very constructive criticism and we did make some changes based on his uh, suggestions. So um, Barrow and she and everyone else thought it was really good. <laughs> so, yeah, I actually, I really like it. I'm very proud of it. Um, I'm looking forward to people hearing it. Like, as I said, 
the last podcast I did, I, I kind of cringe when I look back at it now. Like, that's not to say I wasn't happy doing it at the time. And I, I bear no ill will whatsoever to the person I did it with, Anna. She's a, she's a superstar. But um, maybe we, we overshared a little bit and, and went, uh, like, it got a bit off the rails or whatever. And I, I don't look back fondly on that. But this, I, I've listened to the episode one myself a couple of times. I actually think it's really, really good. Now, I'm really looking forward to everyone hearing it. Um, now, episode one is going to be a talking point because the, we decided to tackle a very important <laughs> issue in the news um, because people like the whole unsolicited nudes issue. A lot of people were calling for men to add their voice to this. So we said, well, we're, we're men. Uh, so let's add our voice to this. What are you laughing at? Oh, I'm just saying, just fucking about. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm you, worse I'm than the okay. well, well, we are men, Dini. It's okay. Yeah, no, we are. we are. So we wanted to add, um, our, it is something that's very, very important that does need to be kind of talked about in the open and stuff like that. So that's episode one, Dating in the Digital World. Um, so, yeah. Um, but yeah, as, as you said, like the as the weeks, months, years go on, We'll deal with everything from like life to fashion to fitness to hair to skin. You name it. A bit um, of everything. And yeah. Well, we'll probably get some guests on after a few weeks. Um, not one Sheehan, uh, but anyone else. <laughs> and um, we'll, uh, yeah, I'm looking forward. It's going to be fun. It's not something I think we'll be doing for a couple of weeks. Hopefully, it'll be something we'll do for a couple of years. So. Yeah, Pretty like good. you said, Patrick, like I've done a load of different podcasts. I've kind of dabbled in everything at this point. And one thing I would say is normally I wouldn't watch back my stuff. Like uh, even uh, even these lives, I don't typically watch them back or anything. But with this podcast, I must say, I think I we strike the balance. <laughs> <laughs> Shocking. No, but I think we strike the balance. I think we come with like one thing I was, and like I've no bother admitting this. One thing I was very fearful with the topic was, and I know you agree with me on this, this isn't going to be like a kind of a hot gossip thing. We're not, that isn't the podcast. No. But this, this first episode, given the nature, there is a bit more kind of sauce in it would be the term I'd use anyway. But I think we yeah. share some good stories. Yeah, we, we really want to know, let people know that we're not going to be a soft podcast. <laughs> yeah, um, no, it like, isn't. But like you know, the second episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're starting off at a very salacious foot just because yeah. it was very relevant at the time that we were recording. So, um, that yeah, you're right in that. Yeah, and if anyone wants to contribute, the way it works is if you send any questions in or stories or anything, we'll read them out and we'll discuss that topic or whatever. And tomorrow we're mm-hmm. actually recording uh, episode two. So if you head over to the Styling and Profiling podcast page, you can send in your questions and we, whatever they are, we'll talk about them. And I actually think the format is really, really cool. It's a bit different. We've got the blog. We've got uh, what's the blog we're doing tomorrow, Patrick? How to how to dress for a first date. Well, oh, geez, I'm looking forward to that. I, I'm actually I'm and I'm, Which, I'm doing this now live. I haven't cleared this with you, but I'm going looking for a date on Tinder over the weekend. So next week I will say we might do how's Dinny getting on in the dating because I'm shocking at all the dating stuff. So you're going to have to help me along the way with that, Patrick. Okay. No? <laughs> <laughs> Good okay. God, okay, help just, us. Uh, I'll try and find my rosary beads and my novena uh, tonight. <laughs> yeah, That's dude. Well, I'm going to set my, t- my Tinder radius to like 100 just to be sure I get some sort of a match. <laughs> Good call. Good call. <laughs> I'll have to go premium. Right. Well, look, Patrick, thanks so much for coming on, man. Uh, enjoy the late, late toy show. Yeah, I can't plug my competition because yeah. you, you've... Dude, oh, shit, sorry. Me, but... I knew there was something. Fuck it. I knew there was something I forgot. Limerick's Most Stylish Man. Tell us about that. Uh, yeah, there's... Well, Limerick's Most Stylish Man. There's one week left to enter. So get your entries in. Um, so next weekend is the cutoff. Um... You've seen the list of prizes. It's ridiculous. There's thousands of euros worth of prizes. And like, thank you so much to all of the local, national, and international businesses that have gotten behind me for this because I wish I could enter it myself. It's incredible. Um, so we have loads of it. Uh, I, I actually was thinking the other day, because like we're, we have judges, um, Shauna Lindsay, Sinead O'Brien, um, Miss Limerick, Kayla McGowan, and um, Keen Lynch are the judges. And I, I got to set up a WhatsApp group and send them all the entries. 
and like, oh fuck, there's there's lots. So like, I'm gonna absolutely spam the shit out of their phones, which is not good. I was just thinking about that yesterday. But they're going to narrow it down to a final six, and the final six will then go to a poll in the Limerick Leader newspaper, where the people of Limerick will vote the winner of Limerick's Most Stylish Man 2020. So you have still got time to enter and be in with a shout of winning all those amazing prizes from places like Brown Thomas. L'Oreal, Kiehl's, the Chicken Hut, you know, you just, you can't beat it. Like, it is the best competition going this Christmas, apart from the people who are giving away Audi cars, never mind them. <laughs> Other than them, it's the best competition going today. And come here, can I enter, because I technically work in Limerick, or do you have to be from Limerick? You can enter, but Sean is a judge, and Sean doesn't like you, so <laughs> there's no point. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck's sake, Patrick! I can't delete this. Like, I know you can't delete man. this. So I, I'm, <laughs> no, I, I have no ill will. No ill will. I'm not. I'm, no comment to that one, Patrick. An absolute pleasure to have you on. I think that's a podcast yeah, episode. Yeah, I thought you're going to cut me off, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Thanks, guys. I'll be back next week. Hopefully, if my Instagram isn't deleted <laughs> after this, um, Patrick. Thanks so much. Best of luck in the competition. Check out the podcast right, tomorrow, bye, bye. guys. Enjoy the toy show. We'll see you later. Cheers.